I'll look at page N. Kind of picks up from uh, what we just talked about on pages 17 through 21 in the other video. But page N has uh, two applications of what we talked about. One is they take a bunch of elements, and, um, compounds, and say put a or indicate which of those two in that bond would have the slightly negative charge, okay? So one of them would be slightly positive, the other would be slightly negative. You say, well, how do we know? Help. All right, I'll help. Page 16. Let's find tin. So tin is down here. Uh, element 50, so that is 1.96. And then we have fluorine. Fluorine is 3.98. So those are the two electronegativities according to our table here on page 16. So whichever number has the higher electronegativity, that's the one that is going to be slightly negative. So we could say that tin is slightly positive, the fluorine is slightly negative, all they want you to write on the blank is the symbol for the element that is a little more negative. All right. Now let's talk about the next section. <clears throat> we want to take, they tell us that we have CH2O and we're supposed to figure out what the molecule structure would look like. And so they say, first of all, list what do we have? Well, we have one carbon two hydrogen and one oxygen. <clears throat> then we're going to draw what those elements look like with their electron dots. Carbon has four electrons, one on each side. Okay. Hydrogen only has one electron. And then oxygen has six. So we do one, two, three, four, five, six. Six electrons. Now remember that the magic number is eight. They want to have eight electrons in their outer shell, but they can share electrons. So the other clue they give us is that carbon is going to be in the middle. So that is a good clue. So let's come over here. We'll put carbon in the middle. And for now, I'm going to use... I'm going to use red to represent the electrons around carbon. One, two, three, four. Okay. So I have two hydrogens. So I'm going to bring the hydrogens up and introduce themselves. One hydrogen pops in here and says, hey, Let's get together. I have an electron I can share with you. Yay! So we have a shared pair of electrons. You see that? Another hydrogen comes up over here and says, Hey, I have one electron I can share. All right, we've got two shared electrons. Now, what's left is we have oxygen. What color have I not used yet? Blue? So oxygen comes up and says, um, I've got six electrons, and I see you have two electrons. If I could share your two electrons, I'll share two of my free electrons with you, and we'll have a double bond. How would that work? And Carbon says, yay! So we have one, two, three, four, and then oxygen is going to share two electrons here. Actually, I should put this one over here. All right. And carbon says, let me take this electron from up here and I'll bring it over here. So notice we have a pair of shared electrons and a pair of shared electrons. Let's count how many we have around carbon now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Carbon's happy. Let's count how many electrons we have around oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oxygen's happy. And of course, hydrogen only needs the two to be happy. And so we have all of the electrons. How many total do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have 12 electrons total. All right. Now, the last step is we're supposed to write it with dashes to represent the single bond. So I'll put carbon in the middle. We'll put a hydrogen bond up here, single hydrogen bond here, 
and in a double bond with oxygen. But what would that atom look like if we did it like this? Okay? See the two hydrogens coming off? And then a double bond here with the oxygen. So in three-dimensional form, this would be C2, C H2 O. Okay. Does that help? Can you visualize that? All right.